had a wonderful day today. I hope you can think of something, some cool surprise you've had or just a magical moment. I can definitely think of one for me today. I had a, a sort of start of my day on set for a really cool short film and first time meeting anyone, like any of the crew. Um, and they were great, really lovely crew and seemed like they really knew what they were doing, which is a great combination. So, today we have got Act 1, Scene 2 of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, it's set in, it just says the same, so that's Athens. And it's set in a room in Quince's house. Enter. Quince the carpenter, Snug the joiner, Bottom the weaver, Flute the bellows mender, Snout the tinker, And Starveling the tailor. Quince. Is all our company here? Bottom. You were best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Quince. Here is the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding night, when he, on his wedding day at night. Bottom. First, good Peter Quince, Say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Quince. Marry, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. Bottom. A very good piece of work, I assure you. And a merry. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Quince. Answers I call you. Nick Bottom the Weaver. Bottom. Ready? Name what part I am for and proceed. Quince. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. Bottom. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? Quince. A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. Bottom. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. To the rest, yet my chief humour is for a tyrant, I could play Ercles, rarely, or a part to tear a cat in, to make all split. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates. And Phoebus car shall shine from far and make them and mar the foolish fates. <laughs> that was but loft that was lofty. Name now the rest of the play. Players. This is Ercles vein, a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling. Quint. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Flute. Here, Peter Quince. Quince. You must take Thisbe on you. Flute. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? Quince. It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Flute. Nay, faith, let, let not me play a woman. I have a beard coming. Quince. That's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. Bottom. Oh, and I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisney, Thisney, ah, Pyramus, my lover dear, thy Thisbe dear, and lady dear. Quince, no, no, you must play Pyramus and flute, you Thisbe. Bottom. Well, proceed. Quince. Robin Starveling the tailor. Starveling. Here, Peter Quince. Quince. Robin Starveling, you must play Thisbe's mother. Tom Snout the Tinker, Snout. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus's father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Snug the Joiner, you, the lion's part. And I hope here is a play fitted. Snug. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be, give it me, for I am slow of study. Quince. 
you may do it exempe, extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Bottom, let me, let me play the lion too. I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. Quince, and you should do it too terribly. You should fright the duchess and the ladies that they would shriek and that were enough to hang us all. All of them together. That would hang us, every mother's son. Bottom. I grant you, friends, if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you and twer any nightingale. Quince, you can play no part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Bottom, well, I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play then? Quince, why, what you will. Bottom, hmm. I would discharge it in either your straw colour beard, your orange tawny beard, your purple and grain beard, or your French crown colour beard, your perfect yellow. Quince, some of your French crowns have no hair at all, and then you will play barefaced. But, masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There will we, will we rehearse, for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw up, draw up a bill of properties such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. Bottom, we will meet. We, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Quince, take pains, be perfect, adieu. At the Duke's Oak we meet. Bottom, enough. Hold or cut bow strings. Excellent. That is the act. end of Act 1, Scene 2. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought this was a very funny chapter. I love these guys. Um, let me know if you need any help with anything. If you need any help, I feel it's a bit more difficult um, understanding a play read by one person than just a novel. So, you know, if you think it would be helpful to have the names written on the screen when I'm reading that character or anything like that, you let me know because I want it to be good for you guys. See you next week.